What's up guys, today we're talking barefoot running injuries. In this video, we're gonna talk specifically about how to fix and strengthen your feet with special guest, Dr. Kelly Starrett. So guys, a lot of you are trying to use barefoot running or more minimalist style running as a way to improve your running techniques or mechanics in some way, but we're running into a lot of speed blocks. Our feet start to rebel against us, and the reason why is that we just haven't adequately prepared our feet for this challenge. The benefits of barefoot running, though, are real. They can help you regardless of the type of runner you are. Even if you're running in shoes, it's good and beneficial to run barefoot as well. So in this video with uh, special guest uh, physical therapist, Dr. Kelly Sturrett, we're gonna talk about how you can set your feet up and your posture up. Not only for stronger feet, we're gonna give you some mobilization strategies on how to work out some of those little kinks in there as well and give you a big picture sense on how to go forward. A lot of the injury prevention and movement mobility things that you guys have gotten from, from us and our program is actually things that we've learned directly from, from people like Kelly specifically. And uh, I wanted to uh, use him and talk a little bit about our feet and about orthotics. Oh, it's such a good conversation. The orthotic nightmare. And let me just say that I came out of the orthotic tradition, right? And one of the things was that my navicular bone, let's, let's define that. Is oh, we're going right into the it. center of your foot here, right? This is the where the navicular bone is, okay. right? It kind of makes the apex of your apex of your arch. And what ends up happening is that when we see that collapse, we see that's a pronated or collapsed foot. And so, if you look down at your feet when you're standing, your ankle should be what we call subtalar neutral. Which is neutral. Which is a fancy position talking about the position of your talus bone. And that means that as I look down, my ankle should be centered over the middle of my foot. And it doesn't take a, a doctorate in, in any kind of biology to look down and say, my ankle is now centered over the middle of my foot. That is our balanced resting position. So one of the things that happens is that over time, or because we're not worrying, we're aware of it, is that we start to stand and our arches collapse. And what ends up happening now in this position, you can see this bulge here at the side of my foot now. Mm -hmm. That's my, that's that navicular bone sticking out the side of the foot. Can you see it? Yeah. And what's happening is that when we see collapsed feet, what's, what people are ultimately doing is they're not using all of the mechanical systems of their feet. They're not using the connective tissue. They're not using the, the ligamentous yeah. structures appropriately. They're not using the muscular systems appropriately. What ends up happening is that they use the ligaments as seat belts. And it's like trying to decelerate your car every time you want to yeah. stop your body. You just go to slam, yeah. slam into the wall and use the seat belt to decelerate. <laughs> and what happens over time is we tend to stretch out these ligaments and we lose the elasticity of the connective tissue that creates a stable springy arch mm -hmm. and right, and our feet So it's like the weak. spring is stretched out all the time. That's right, it's stretched out and then basically you know, it's like your mom said, hey, don't lock your knees out and hang on your knees, right? If, if I, I just extended my elbow and hyperextended my elbow and lived on it all the time, it would cause problems. And so what we happened is we identified these collapsed feet positions and said, hey, that's not good. And a lot of times they were the genesis of a lot of really faulty mechanics because as the foot collapsed, then suddenly I had an ankle impingement and my toe wasn't working correctly and then the back, my, you, can, you can see that my Achilles isn't pulling correctly. When I, when I so collapse, when this foot collapse, you're actually starting to see problems further up. And one of the things I want you guys to notice, when he showed his foot collapse, he also had his foot turn out a little bit. That's right. So why is this not necessarily good? This just feeds into that whole thing. Well, what's interesting is, you know, the ankle's designed, especially running, to work in this direction, this plane. And as soon as I turn my foot out and strike the ground like this, I'm inducing a horrible twist to the system mm. and at two to three times body weight repeated hundreds of times no, over you know. 400 meters. It's only 340 steps for 400 meters and quickly the oscillation. Wait, what if I just say believe it, achieve it? <laughs> you just got to grip it. So the problem is a lot of us are challenging the end wings of our tissues and when I, my foot collapses, what happens to my knee also? Now I have a teletracking problem. Whole, whole issues up the chain. And so what we wisely identified, we said, hey, that's not a very good foot position. And, and at speed and at load, this is, this is causing us problems. And so what we did for a long time was said, hey, let's support the arch. Because the arch 
so this is, is the collapse. genesis of yeah. your thought. Right intention, wrong application. Right. Now, so if the foot's collapsing, but like if we put something underneath the foot, that's going to support some things. That's right. Store that's work. right. And, and, and this is, I know, it's potentially a big can of worms to talk mm -hmm. about orthotics. And there is absolutely a role for orthotics. When we have people who cannot walk, we're not talking about running. Cannot walk pain free. And if you can't walk pain free, chances are you shouldn't be running pain free, mm -hmm. right? Or running. We're talking about people's feet who are so destroyed that we're gonna give them temporary splinting, temporary support of the arch until we can rebuild the feet and yeah. re kind of support the feet with its intrinsic yeah. support systems. Now, let's talk about people who find themselves in orthotics. You know, I've yet to meet the person who wakes up on a Saturday morning. It's a bright sunny day, I got nothing to do. You know, I'm gonna call my podiatrist and get some orthotics because hey, all the cool kids have them. How the cool kids have them? And normally it's like three weeks out of the race and they're like, oh shit, I'm limping. My race has come up there. My parents are flying across country to watch me in this marathon. I need to get to the starting line. Doc, help me out. Yeah, and you know, what we're thinking is that, you know, first and foremost, understand that the foot spring, the arch, is one of our natural ways of absorbing force and returning mechanical force. And so when I strike, the foot becomes, is flexible, dynamic, and it allows me to adjust to the surface. And then as I translate over my basic support, the foot becomes rigid and becomes a plantar spring, right? I had 17% efficiency and return rate of stored energy in the Achilles. But if I'm dumping out through the collapsed foot, I'm not getting that energy back from that powerful spring. So in essence, you're getting a free, a, a certain degree of free energy, we can almost call it, Absolutely. from that elastic return in the Achilles. The, the, but that only the, happens when the ankle and the Achilles is in a good position. And in a, is in a better position than a collapsed mm -hmm. foot. And you know, the research is clear about how we evolved this foot spring, how we evolved short toes, how we evolved this Achilles, so that we're designed to run as human beings. This is one of the things that makes us humans. Yeah. And so when any time you see an arch in the world, think about a bridge, think about all the supports, do you see something holding the bridge up? No. No. It's because the arch is what we call a non-weight-bearing surface. And that's from Nikolai Romanov. That's his term. Hey, the arch is a non-weight-bearing surface. And what is happening is that when we post the arch, two things happen. One is that, like any other aspect of your body, things that are braced and supported become weak over time. Mm. Right? And so what ends up happening so like is that... Crutch. It is a crutch. That's right. Is that I don't have to work to hold my foot up. I wear eye crushes, we call those glasses. <laughs> that's sometimes. right, that's right. And so literally my foot is just becomes weak around that and I'm using that structural support. The second thing happens is that the foot needs to actually absorb force, return, and when I start running into a wall, I end up transmitting energy yeah. somewhere so, else. So what you said is interesting. So you know, taking, taking us through the mindset of that runner who's freaked out, who doesn't know, their foot's hurt, who says, hey, you gotta go see my guy, he'll get you to the starting line. Great. He wears the orthotic, he gets through the race, he survives, but then all of a sudden he doesn't really have an exit strategy to wear the orthotic. In fact, this person is now afraid to wear any other shoes, the orthotic Exactly, the orthotic starts to right. enter in. I can't walk shoes. around in my house barefoot because I don't have orthotics. I mean, this is nonsense. How many children do you know have orthotics? They're born, <laughs> they're not born, right? So what we need to do is a couple things. That's coming. Right. Is one, I think Elon Musk is working on well, that. We're going to put them on the wall, charge it, take the sun juice. So what we need to do, first and foremost, is start to cultivate a better resting position. Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is that when most of us are turned out, it's very difficult to be balanced over the middle of the foot. And you'll see that if I stand with my feet straight and resting, I can look down and I can screw my hip into the ground a little bit and actually pick up my foot. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people stand a little bit too far on the outside, which is also a problem. The well, two super that's nature. right. I just need to be able to look down and see that my feet are in the middle, and I'll practice that. And one of the things that we try to do with all our athletes is say this thing we call hide the reps. Let's get working all the time so that when I go express the you know the, the work, it's it's that. better. But in the meantime, I, this is not something I have to save up and do my foot drills. I'm doing foot drills constantly. So this is interesting. So it's your running is not necessarily just the you know, 10 minutes of run technique drills you do, you know, once a week, or if you're honest, maybe once a month, uh, it really relates to how you're moving throughout the day. Absolutely, and that means we're creating ready tissues, ready state positions for the body that set me up for success on the run. Okay, so this is a nice segue. So, you're that person who's been in the orthotic, 
and you're a little afraid, a little feared, and you're trying to get out. Rightfully so, I get it. And remember, I had motion control shoes, Brooks Beast, with oh, with it, with it, uh, orthotic in there, right? Oh, wow. And it turns out that didn't solve my running pain. Right? <laughs> it wasn't until like the Cooper Dan strategy. Totally, it wasn't. Awesome. And they were so heavy. It wasn't until I learned how to run mm -hmm. and got my feet strong again that you know I was able to ditch everything and run. And I ran an ultra in Innovate, right? Really like the 225 really and style. zero and no no insoles. So I actually ripped the insoles out of my shoes because I like the flatter surface. So here's what we want to do. First and foremost. Let's set the conditions in our day-to-day -day life so that we can be barefoot or flat as much mm. as we can. That's our first condition, so that I'm always making my feet work. I'm looking down and correcting my foot position, reclaiming a straight foot, so that if I started to run, I would automatically be in good shape. It wouldn't be I walked around and then all of a sudden like, oh, now I'm running, right? And so just by removing that crutch, you're making that foot work, right? We're so just by, going, just by virtue of you going barefoot, one of the beautiful things is that your foot's already starting to work and challenge a little bit more. That's right, and this is an important idea is that, you know, one is I put myself on shaping grade. I've been wearing more for the last 20 years. I'm gonna go barefoot for 30 minutes and then go back in my shoes. And tomorrow I'm gonna go barefoot for an hour, mm. right? And then the next, I'm gonna stay at that week, week of being flat or barefoot. And, we, and then I'm not gonna change my running shoe yet. I'm just gonna make my yeah. feet so You're talking about the time you're not running just throughout the day. That's right. A little bit more. That's right. I'm gonna look down and I'm gonna start to correct this, this regular foot position. I'm also going to begin to address just the stiffness of my feet. So what we see is that the easiest thing you can do is we're not looking at the bottom of the foot as a stiff dynamic, as a, as a, a system of, of joints and motions and, and ligaments and musculature. And even just taking a ball and beginning to rub the bottom of your feet back and forth while you're standing at your workstation, while you're chopping vegetables, right, while you're watching the TV, this is an easy time to be improving the quality association. Of Game yeah. of Thrones, bourbon, and you roll your I'm just saying. <laughs> The idea is to set up situations for success, and that's a high success. So what we've done is first and foremost is that we're starting to cultivate an awareness around our foot position all the time, and you will have to correct this. Yeah. Be barefoot as much as you can, or flat as much as you can. But what do you mean by flat? Does that just mean a different flat style? Shoe. That means I'm going from a shoe with any kind of heel, heel to toe differential, back to something that looks flat. So I'm less concerned ultimately that you're running flat, even though we should be able to run in a flat zero differential shape. It might take a little while to get there. Yeah, and, and ultimately I think, hey, two or three millimeters, four millimeters, that's not the limiting factor. But the rest of the time I'm spending flat. So I'm wearing, you know, wearing really flat shoes, cons, chucks, shoes that have no arch support that make me work for the ground. And if I can be barefoot, I'm barefoot. I like that, that's perfect. So the last thing is, you know, it's easy also, and these are the Romanoff foot exercises, to be toying around with just making your feet strong as you're shopping in line. So a couple of simple ideas, roll to the outside of your feet, roll onto the balls of your toes, and come down. And again, this is not something that you should substitute for squatting. Right. This shouldn't substitute for rolling. This is something I'm doing while I'm waiting in line or checking my email. So I'm working on the I'm just trying to put more input into my feet, which have honestly, for a lot of our runners, become concrete blocks. Right. Right. We just pretend like they don't exist. We strap people on. Concrete blocks. We become blocks. You know, I can stand on the toe and just balance here. I can go onto a single foot to do the same thing. I can be trying to come up onto my heels. You can play a whole bunch of foot games with yourself. It doesn't matter so much as long as you're thinking, hey, are my feet strong? So one of the things that we feel strongly about is jump roping is a wonderful way of getting daily input into your feet as part of your warm up. So I would say it's very much mimicking yeah. that little elastic bounce and recoil. And to make sure that I don't collapse, I say make sure your toes touch. So literally, the simple idea of making, of putting that input in, simple jump roping, and bringing your feet in together and bringing your toes. That brings things in together so much that it's almost impossible for your ankles to collapse at that point. Which is often where we're running. Uh -huh. Okay, it looks a little bit more like a run. I don't know about here. Less. Oh, okay. You can. You can. <laughs> the other thing is, as a quick test, one of the things I think everyone should be able to do, and we put this in the book, uh, Ready to Run, is that you should be able to do a hundred single foot jumps on a jump rope. As so, a little standard. Yeah. Like how and it's, and it's not. Be. I can't run until I have that. And the idea is, hey. 
your feet are hugely important to the entire kinetic chain, and if you have a really mush foot, obviously then the rest of this mechanical engineering near miracle is not going to do well in the mush foot. And so just being able to turn, and you can even not do a jump rope and just warm up on the ground with a hundred of those as part of your daily, you're going to find that you're either become a Russian dancer <laughs> or Sorry, that, this is that your feet are weak. Yeah. And what we're looking at is generally how we improve the structure of the feet through habitus and awareness, right? How do we wean ourselves out of the orthotic? How do we get stronger, kind of more conditioned feet that are dynamic? We have a podiatrist who works with children in the South Bay we like, and he does make orthotics for children. And listen to how it works. If a child feels the orthotic, they're not in the right position. Interesting. So he's like, yeah, we have to cue our kids. And literally they're like, oh, to feel stand it. stand better where that stand, actually oh, picks up That's right, so the kid collapses and you come back up. The, again, just the, the reiteration is if you stand with your feet out, try to feel where your balance is, and you'll see that naturally you're gonna collapse towards the middle. It's just really difficult to stand and relevate the whole day long and maintain the integrity of your feet. And standing with your feet underneath your hips, toes pointing forward, arches engaged, is a fantastic way of weaning yourself out of that orthotic. I love it. So just to wrap things up, that um, orthotic is something that runners have been used or been given as a little crutch and support system for the foot. But the bigger, deeper problem is mush foot. Mush foot. Almost captured mush foot. 20 minutes of just mush foot. And we need to get ourselves in a little bit better position. We need to spend more time barefoot. We need to get ourselves out of the more supportive shoes into slightly less supportive shoes just to challenge to get that working a little bit more. And of course, we need to be working on those run drills and working on really good run mechanics. It's a system. We look at your feet and your foot quality as a skill. And you never become too skilled. Like that. Well guys, thank you again so much. Kelly, thank you. Guys, that is it. If you like this video and you like having these special guests on there, go ahead and let me know. Hit that like button. Any comments about today, any requests for future videos, hit me up in the comments section. Lastly, if you want more injury prevention videos and other run-related topics, you got to subscribe to our channel. It's definitely where it's at. We love uh, giving you guys all that great content. And uh, finally, we've got a free gift for you all about injury prevention. We actually have uh, a free video series that uh, teaches you how to really foam roll the right way. You'd be surprised. Not a lot of people know how to do it right. And also how to get ahead of injuries by not getting injured in the first place. It seems simple. It is. Uh, but. A lot of us don't know how to nail that right, so we're gonna go ahead and give you that. All you need to do, click this link in this video. If you're on your mobile device, don't worry, there's an identical link in the description below. It's gonna take you to another page. All you need to do is do there is enter your email address in. Once you do that, I'll be able to personally email you that free injury prevention training. Once again, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video. Yeah.